Are you tired of working for someone else? Want to control your own work hours? Do you have what it takes to start a business? Get ready to learn how to boss up on Generation CEO. Hey guys, how are you today? Good. I'm here to talk about how with technology you can make amazing worlds. Come with me. My team and I bring the Halo world to life. Is that you? That is me. I wasn't a math genius and I knew nothing about coding. But you guys do. You guys have the power to change things. I want your job. I want you to have my job. Hello and welcome to Generation CEO, a show where business owners of all ages can share their businesses as well as tips on how to make a business successful. I'm your host, Dr. Renee Allen, and today on our show we want to welcome business owner Nashe Wagoner, owner of On The Run Cosmetics. Welcome to Generation CEO. Thank you. I'm You're happy welcome. to be here. Yes, well, let's start it off right. <laughs> What's the you know? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm known for my bell, you know, okay. so I just want to bring it to me so we can have a little you know, conversation here. Okay. Um, hi, Nashe. How are you? I'm doing good. How are welcome you? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Yes. I understand that you're 16 years of age. I'm 17 now. 17? Woo yes, ma'am. your birthday? <laughs> March 20th. Wow. Well, I know you have a thriving business. Do you mind telling us a little bit about it? Yes, I started On The Run Cosmetics three years ago. It'll be three years on April, April 9th. At my launch, I sold out of all of my products, and um, I was surrounded by all of my friends and family members. It was just a happy moment. I was so excited to start the business, but... Even though I was happy, I was nervous because, you know, business is risky, yeah. but I'm glad I took the risk. Mm -hmm. Well, why did you decide to start the business? I was inspired by lipstick and lip gloss, and every time I wanted to purchase makeup, even if it was in a dollar store, I felt like I could do it on my own mm -hmm. and I could have access to it for myself. And the business industry was getting too expensive, and it is getting expensive, so I wanted to make it affordable for every woman to have. Yes, yes. I'm curious, uh, what age did you start thinking you wanted to become an entrepreneur in this particular arena? I believe it was around 12. I, I had the idea around 12, but I didn't really execute it until I was 15. Given your age, what do you think is the most challenging part of being a business owner? I think the most challenging part is um, juggling school athletics and entrepreneurship because mm -hmm. on the weekends sometimes you want to spend time with your friends but I do events as well so I may have an event and then I have to squeeze in time with my friends or <laughs> I have an event and I have to squeeze in time for athletics as well mm -hmm. but I with the help of my parents I manage it all yes can you say that again <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> with the help of the parents right yes how did you prepare for this particular venture today uh, with the help of my parents, once again, <laughs> they helped me put everything together. My dad, he's um, on the financial aspect of it, mm -hmm. and I have a stepmom and my mother who helped me with my events, mm -hmm. how to decorate my table about presentation when I'm doing my events because it's vending, so everything has to go together so that I can sell my product. That's wonderful to have a blended family yes. that's working together. Um, what did you do for income prior to initiating this business? Uh, before I owned my business, I was just doing, I was doing cheerleading mm -hmm. as well as managing my grades. What do you think sets your business aside from all businesses like yours? I think my business is unique because first I'm young and I'm dedicated no matter what road I come across, I'll keep going with my business. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to young entrepreneurs in starting a business? The best advice that I would give is to never never give up because even though it may look easy to other people but behind closed doors you stress about the business like sometimes you want to give up but I really stress do not give up because it's going to be good times and bad times throughout the whole journey. I'm very curious to know what has been you said three years right yes. coming up in your third year anniversary what was your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge, I think it would be 
vending, which is when I do my events, because I had to learn that some people wouldn't be interested in certain products. So I had to learn how to get them and get them to get out of their box. Because most women I come across, oh, I'm too light for this color, or I'm too dark for this color, but I had to show them that you can wear any color you want and it's okay, because if you want to wear it, you can wear it. Nobody's going to say anything to you. Yeah. That's a nice segue into your actual products. What are your colors? I have a lot of colors, but I mostly have um, liquid matte lipsticks. You may have heard of those, and lip glosses. So I'm known for my clear gloss. It's called Stay Glossy. And the popular matte would be Bad Girl, which is what I'm wearing now. Oh, I think I have to get some of that glossy when we're done with this interview. <laughs> yes. yes, it's a clear gloss. Yes, I love clear. Well, everybody can wear clear. Of course. Yeah. So is that your best seller? Yes, of course. I'm it not is. surprised. Yeah. And not a lot of people like, you know, lipstick right. simply because they're too dark or too light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to hear about, you know, you've only been on this earth 17 years, but yes. tell us a little bit about your inspiration, who inspired you to start this business, uh, maybe um, halfway through, maybe another inspiration. What keeps you going? Other than my parents, when I first began the business, they were my inspiration because they told me that I can do it no matter what. But as I follow people on social media, uh, people like Supercent, um, Judy on, on Instagram, they really inspire me because um, Supercent, she made a million dollars in an hour. Wow. And she does cosmetics as well, so it was like a big inspiration that I could really do that too. So I look up to her. Wow, a million dollars in one yes. hour. So what's the most you've made in your Ooh. business? In a year? Uh, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Ask your parents, right? They yeah, like, the money. Yes, my dad. My dad is always so strict about you know you got to budget this, you can't spend this like. How have you grown? Because you're in high school, right? Yes, I'm in my junior year. Yeah, how have you grown and how have your co-students um, um, handled your success in your business? Um, throughout school, I've grown up and a lot of people are like, oh, you own a business and you're mm -hmm. in school. And of course, I have lost friends due to my business because they were like, they weren't happy for me, but I, I really gained friends throughout my high school career. Yeah. And it was like they really support me, and I'm really grateful for that. Well, this is awesome. Thank you for being with us today. Stick around, please. We'd like to bring you on with another guest later. Thank you. Next up, we have a seasoned entrepreneur sharing a business you won't want to miss. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it. First impression. My way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. Welcome back to Generation CEO, a show where business owners can showcase their businesses and share tips on how to become successful business owners. Let's welcome our next guest, Mrs. Phyllis T. Adams, owner of Light It Up with AAA. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to have you. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. Okay. My name is Phyllis T. Adams, and we are the, I'm the owner of Light It Up with AAA. We're an event lighting business where we transform your room with lights. We uh, literally paint the walls with lights. Oh, I love it. So what motivated you to start this particular kind of business? Our story is a little unique. We started out, life threw us some lemons and we made the best lemonade possible. My husband had cancer. My daughter was getting married. My son made poor choices, and because of his poor choices, I turned him in, and he was incarcerated for 14 months. Still being the mother, not enabling him, but enabling him, 
I asked him, let's start a lighting business. Mm -hmm. He said, Ma, what do you know about lighting? And I said, simply, it's pretty. Mm -hmm. So with, from that point, we picked out, we had sent him pictures. Mm -hmm. He picked out the lights, and the rest is history. We started lighting it up. I love it. Were you working while getting the business started? No, I was, my husband and I are both retired, so we had a little time on our hands. Mm -hmm. What did you find most challenging about starting the business? The most challenging part was getting through all of the lemons that we were dealt with and also knowing our worth. The one thing our son told us is, Mom, know your worth. A lot of times people will have a tendency to try to get you to um, charge a lower, much lower rate, but um, that's not uh, what we do. We know our worth. Let's talk a little bit about those lemons, okay. if you don't mind. Yes, um, as I said, ours is a very unique story. Um, when my son made the poor choices and we turned him in, um, at that time, things were a little difficult. And so once we started the business, uh, he would call on Wednesdays and he says, do you have any lighting events? And we would tell him yes or no. And we sent him the manuals and he would tell us how to program the lights. All of our lights are wireless lights. So he would go through the process of telling us how to program the lights. And once he told us that, then we would go out and do the events. We had no formal training. We had no idea what lights were. But I know that God guided us through every step, through every process, where to position each and every light to get the most bang for our buck. Who was the spearheader of the lighting business? I was the spearheader because all I wanted to do was give him a job when he got out so that he could make three times the amount of money that he was making when he was hustling on the streets. So that was my only goal was that he have a job once he got out of jail. Wow, a mother's love. Yes. Yeah. What was your biggest challenge uh, once he came out and you started to do the business together? Learning how to work with family is very difficult. Um, each person wants to have their own input and each person sees a different way to make it work. Um, and I remember going into one event that was a very difficult place to light because it had no walls. It was a tennis um, facility. And um, a lady pulled me to the side because she saw that I was struggling and she says, determine who's the, po who's the boss, who's in charge, who is the lead. Once we determined who the lead was, and that day I made him the lead. <laughs> and suddenly he started using his own vision and I was there to assist and guide and it was very successful. What makes your business uh, more unique? Um, in comparison to these same lighting companies? Um, number one, we're a family-owned business. Mm -hmm. It's my husband, myself, my daughter. Um, she came by default because she really didn't want to do it, but she <laughs> likes doing it now. His daughter, um, one friend, and my two grandchildren. So it's really a family business. It's family-owned all the way. Tell us about your first year. Okay. The first year I was expecting to do maybe 10 to 12 events because we had no idea. Lighting was new, so we had to tell people, we had to justify why we were charging what we were charging. So it was very difficult. Um, we had to sell ourselves. Mm -hmm. And within the first year where I expected to do those 10 to 12 events, it turned into 50 events and it totally blew my mind. <laughs> Had God told me that it would have moved that fast, I would have backed off. That's why he didn't tell me. Yeah. Wow. Well, how did you keep up? Um, I think I did a little bit of everything I was doing. And the good part was I was retired. So I was able to, uh, when he called, he would guide me through how to start the business, all of the paperwork, because he did his research while he was incarcerated. Wow. And he would share it with me, and that's how we moved forward. Yeah. He sounds like a genius. He was. He was. He just, he was very intelligent, but he made poor choices, and all of us make poor choices. Some of us get caught, 
and they have to pay for their mm -hmm. choices. So we took the lemons and made the best lemonade and we moved from there. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Uh, what did you do, I'm curious, before you started the lighting business for income? Now, that was <laughs> an interesting part. I think God gave me certain jobs that taught me how to manage people, how I worked at Safeway and, and um, for 25 years. I was in human resources. I was a front end manager. So those tools were the necessary things, the hardships that we went through were the necessary things to make it possible. I heard you talk about the wireless lighting. Yes. And I, I'm used to seeing a lot of wires when I'm at a lot of events, so mm -hmm. that must make it a little bit more price point, more expensive, I would imagine, right? Um, not really more expensive. It makes it more convenient. Mm -hmm. I can go in and sometimes I've set up in as short a time as 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. The longest amount of time I've taken is maybe an hour, hour and a half. Mm -hmm. So, but um, the people that I work with, all of them have OCD, so they're very particular on how to position the lights, which is perfect. What would you say to an entrepreneur who's maybe over 40, mm -hmm. um, who wants to start a business and is a little shy uh, or has fear? Just do it. <laughs> Had I thought about it, I don't think I would have done it, but like I said, my purpose was different. Um, we wanted him to be able to have something to um, to own. And that's what, once he, he got into the business and he felt the passion for it, he owned it. Wow. Well, we're so happy to have you here. We have another entrepreneur we're going to bring back. We'd love for you to stay. Is that okay? Yes, Thank absolutely. you so much. It's important for our veteran business owners to guide our younger entrepreneurs. Sometimes it can be the other way around. You never know on our show. So stay tuned for another exciting conversation on the next segment of Generation CEO. We'll be right back. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Watcha opening that education savings account when she was little, spearheading a campus tour, and another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? Well, now she's like, yeah! you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back. It's always important that we share information with our viewing audience, especially our future entrepreneurs who are interested in starting a business. Let's take a moment to watch a clip of a young man talking about his plans for entrepreneurship. Hi, my name is Jonathan Bingham. I'm an aspiring entrepreneur. I'm 20 years old and I'm the aspiring CEO of Bingham Hol Holistic Health Services. The ultimate goal for my business is pretty much to provide psychiatric care for lower income families and homeless people who otherwise wouldn't really have access to such care. Now, the money side of, of things is to be determined, but I'm hoping to partner with, you know, um, different nonprofit organizations who really not only could like give me the financial resources to do, to propagate my business, but give me access to those people who are otherwise, you know, underprivileged and wouldn't have access to these services. Joining me back in the studio is Nashe Wagner, CEO of On The Run Cosmetics and Phyllis T. Adams, CEO of Light It Up with AAA. How are you? Wonderful. <laughs> well, good. welcome back. Thank you. And after seeing the video, what would you ladies give this young man advice about getting his business started? Is he on the right track? I think so. I think he has the right idea as far as the nonprofit organizations. When I first watched the video, I was like, oh, he should start a nonprofit because usually people would donate to health aspects. Mm -hmm. I also think he's on the right track. He, as long as he takes his purpose and make it his passion, his passion has to be his purpose. When both of those connect together, he has all the tools he needs. What additional steps, especially with the two of you being in business for years, would you recommend for him? 
Social media is a big aspect of our time, so I really feel like he should go to social media, not for help, but to get his purpose across the internet, because with the internet, things spread quickly, and you will more than likely want positive information on the internet rather than negative information. And I think what he's doing is really a positive thing. Awesome. One of the other avenues that I think he could pursue is if he goes to the Mar to the state of Maryland, they have programs for new entrepreneurs, and they guide them and they walk them through every step of the way. And I think that's very important when you get the basics. You know, you have a product, but you need your basics. You need to know what you need to do to filter through all of the, the bureaucratic, bureaucratic stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, that leads me into talking about your granddaughter. Okay. Right. <laughs> so um, tell us about her dreams and aspirations as an entrepreneur. Okay. I have an 11-year-old granddaughter, and I think she was inspired um, to be an entrepreneur by hanging with Grandma. She started at the age of six um, answering our phones for us for Light It Up with AAA, and um, someone heard her answer the phone. They thought it was an answering machine. They were so impressed with her. And even though she didn't have her own personal business, she was working with us, answering the phones, talking to anybody that would look at her, selling and promoting Light It Up with AAA. Um, and now she wants to someday own her own restaurant. That is a goal for her. So we created a makeshift restaurant for her, and we brought in 16 aspiring chefs and a professional chef to teach them how to uh, cook a four-course meal and to serve it as a restaurant. And her restaurant is called McKenzie's Place. Kenzie's Place. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, listening to that, I know you are a proud grandmother, and she's a proud granddaughter. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, so, tell me, Nache, about your family and how they have inspired you. Uh, my, fam my family has inspired me because first, my stepmother, as I say, I have a blended family, she owned her own cleaning business. And so that really inspired me to really push and do my business. Although she's not in her business thoroughly as she was before, that really pushed me to keep going in my business so that it doesn't fall. Not necessarily fall, but so I don't get off track. Thank you. So can either of you um, offer any additional advice to our viewing audience about not only starting and maintaining a business, but the passion behind it? I think with me, my passion came from, again, as I said, my son who had made some poor choices. When he came home from being incarcerated, he had to actually work with the lights. And he was doing a phenomenal job of taking it to the next level. Um, then one day he went skydiving with his daughter on for their um, their birthdays. And by the way, their birthdays are the same day as Lachey's birthday. Yes, um, they were all born on March the 20th. Yes. And as a belated birthday gift, they went skydiving. And after they went skydiving, he went to teach someone how to swim. After he did that, he was on his way back home to pick up his daughter. And um, it was one of those um, moments in time. He hit a patch of sand, he slid into the sidewalk, he slid into the street. I happened to be up the street when I heard the crash. I thought it was my husband who had just left the area, and I started praying for the person who was down. I looked at the bike, I said, the bike looks familiar, the helmet looks familiar. He took one last breath and God called him home. Um, from that point, we wanted to make sure that we carried on the legacy of his business. His daughter, who works with us as well, started college 10 days later. And as many times I wanted to give up because the passion wasn't there, but because it was something we started for her dad. And now it's what's helping her to get through college because some of the funds that come in, we use it to pay for her to go to college. That's wonderful. Yeah. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Nishay, what role does passion play in getting your business started as well as keeping it going? I think passion plays a big role. For the most part, some people get into business just for the money. Oh, I need money, I should start a business. But the business and entrepreneur life is so much better when you love what you're doing Absolutely. and you know what you're doing and you know about the background business of what you're doing because when you come into contact with 
people who are the same of your business and you know what it is, it, it makes the interview process and business process even more experiencing. Like the experience through business with your passion is much better than, oh, I'm just doing this for money. So I could just say and do whatever I want. But when you know and when you love what you're doing, it's like, I really love this and I really want you to take part in what I'm doing. I like that. I like that a lot. I totally agree with that 100%. Passion. <laughs> passion is everything. And not only do I instill it with us and the business, but I instill it in the grandchildren, the two grand girls. And then we have our grandson who wants to be an entrepreneur. So they think that they're, they are the third generation that are still keeping us. There are times when there are children's parties, mm -hmm. and they've had children's parties with up to 200 guests. Wow. And um, they get to do the lighting, they get to program the lighting, <laughs> and they think they're, you know, that's it. That's what life is all about. Yeah. I also feel like passion inspires other people to do Absolutely. things. It, it gets their mind moving as to what is what exactly is my passion? Can I do this on my own? So mm -hmm. I feel like passion plays a big role for other people as well. Mm -hmm. How did you find your passion, Ashe? I found my passion actually through my mom. <laughs> she always bought matte lipsticks and I would play in them when she wouldn't know. <laughs> and so it was like, I really love lipstick. We would share lipstick most of the time because like Mac, it was like $16 or two, and she was like, oh no, I gotta buy another one, so you need to, you know, help me pay for this. <laughs> and so I was like, well, I could just make it myself. Awesome. And she was like, well, actually, you can, and that's where I got the idea from. Yeah, that's a good mom, because most moms don't let you share that type of, mm -hmm. that, I mean, that, that price still, point. <laughs> we still share my lipstick to this day, so I'm like, <laughs> okay. <getting> back. <laughs> yes. Uh, Miss Adams, talk about what you would say to your son if he was alive today, about the business and what it means to you? If PJ were alive today, I'd tell him job well done because there were many times when I didn't believe in me. I didn't think I could do it. I didn't think I was capable. And I would hear him say, Ma, you can do it. I would hear him say, Ma, know your worth. Don't let people prostitute your business. Don't let them do it for free or for next to nothing. And um, many times when we go to an event, his favorite color was red. So seeing the red here with the lighting, that's the first thing I noticed. Um, he would always show me a little sign. I could feel a breeze blowing softly on my shoulder, letting me know that you did a good job. And we've traveled from Maryland to Rhode Island doing lighting. And um, we went to New York to do lighting for his daughter at college. And when we thought we couldn't do it, he says, Ma, don't give up. You can just hear him. So I know that he would tell me, my job, well done. I'm proud of you. And that's what inspires me and keeps me going when I want to give up or when I'm too tired because I started the business later in life. And that's a little hard because at the 11 o'clock, I want to be in bed, yeah. not at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm still packing up to go home. So it's, it's fun, but I know he would be proud. I know that he would be proud of us. He is, and you said his name was PJ? Yes, uh, Preston Jr., and we called him PJ. Mm -hmm. And um, even now, with we don't take every job because every job is not a good job. Every money, all the money is not good money, so you have to know the difference. You have to know when to say, I'm gonna walk away from this. Well, you see I have red on, so that's for PJ, yes. right? <laughs> and your next color. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we always keep a red because people love red. And to add on what she said yeah. about knowing your worth, uh, you will come across friends and even family who will be like, you charging that amount for a lipstick? Like, okay, I'm your family, I'm your friend, and you should support yeah. the business, yeah. and especially black Thank businesses, you. because we're all trying yes. to yeah. do extra things to get money. Yeah. I appreciate that. We have to wrap up now. I could talk to y'all forever. <laughs> but, well, that's it for our show today. We want to thank our guests for being here. The young man who shared his business plan on video. We enjoyed showcasing entrepreneurs of different ages doing their thing as current and future CEOs. Have a peaceful, positive, and productive week. Bye for now.